What's going on fans and classmates? This is Verdi L. Coleman III presenting to you yet another episode of Technologies and Creative Learning edition of Road to the Doctorate. This one is a special episode because we're talking about technology use, the policies and procedures. And so, get along with my persona, Mr. English. We're going to be looking at different ways that you can teach your students on how to avoid plagiarism and to avoid viruses and to help protect you as well because we need to be able to we need to be able to give the best netiquette the best advice to students on when they're surfing the web when they're running into other people how to respect them and so on so let's go ahead and jump right into it digital citizenship what is it Digital, digital citizenship is knowing exactly how to act appropriately and responsibly while using technology. Now, why is it important? To help prevent many different negative, negative effects of online social media and other sites. Now, of course, with, with digital citizenship, there has to be, you know, rules in place. There has to be rules in place. So, first rule is make real people a priority Two, use appropriate communication three there be very discreet in the information that you share four do not be exclusive five be smart in choosing your friends six don't send large files over email number seven people are entitled to their privacy eight validate your information before you post it that means you better fact check it and then nine respond expediently to emails do not do not wait all year to respond to somebody's email. That's rude. Number 10, always update your information. You want to ensure accuracy, okay? Now, copyright infringement. First and foremost, you can't define copyright infringement if you don't know what copyright is, all right? Now, this is defined as having the legal right of the owner of intellectual property. Basically, everybody that has something to work with and produce, they can do it as they please. Now, copyright infringement, you need to know what it is. It is using or producing material that you don't have permission to use. Now, there are three ways that you can prevent this. Here they go. Always ask permission of the original producer. It's nothing wrong with asking, all right? Give credit to said person who is the owner of the work. That means shout them out. Be like, hey, this is from so-and-so place. Always be always be conscientious of that gain that licensing sometimes you can gain a licensing and be able to buy the work from the producer yes they're still going to get royalties every time you use it but it actually works out better when you've already bought it that means you can use it as much as you please and of course you're still going to give credit to where credit is due all right fair use what is it fair use is the ability to use and reproduce copyrighted works without the need to ask the copyright owner assuming Assuming the user follows the conditions mandated by in the different domains. Now, this is relevant to educational purposes, colleges, universities. They all have different uh, limits and domains that you kind of have to follow because if you don't follow them correctly, then you're going to find yourself spiraling into a hole and the university can be held accountable for that. And of course, we're, we're not going to play that around here. Now, how does this affect us as educators? There are two main ways that it does, all right? In the classroom, knowing fair use, this is our ability to be able to teach the students how to use fair use when doing projects and papers that require research. Now, for us giving online instruction, we want, we want to lead by example. So when we are teaching the students how to use fair use or when we use it ourselves to produce the lessons, because we don't want to just go borrowing. We just don't want to go creating stuff and not give credit to the person that, you know, that's using it. Hypocritical. Now, you're going to find that most of this presentation from here on out is going to be about plagiarism. I am very heavy about plagiarism. I do not like plagiarism at all. My students know this. And yet they still do it. You're going to find out something interesting later on in the presentation. But what is it? It's defined as taking someone's work and passing it off as your own or something plagiarized as Miriam Webster says it. Now, I have something what's called a student prevention plan in, par in plagiarism. It's a work in progress because this thing does not work yet. I'm still finding the kinks. But some people, it's put the fear of God in them. 
So when quoting word for word, use quotation marks. This sets it out. And of course, you know, you're going to immediately cite it afterwards. When paraphrasing, make sure that you immediately cite it after completing the sentence. At the end of the paper or project, always be sure to have a works cited page. And then finally, use online resources to help properly acquire citations for your paper or project. All right, now, as I told you before, there's some facts I gotta share with you. This little pie chart here, it's 3D pie chart, is sharing a representation of my 11th graders this year that have plagiarized on my assignments. Now, after some very intense boredom and curiosity and frustration with plagiarism, I did these numbers during the 2020 semester. I came up with that 74.3%, I got the math on this, 74.3% did indeed plagiarize on my assignments. 25, basically 26% did not. Now, I know what you guys may be thinking. Mr. Coleman, how on earth did you get that knowledge? I basically took every instance of when a child or a student plagiarized in my work that I've caught. So this is just subjective. This is baseline subjective. These are based on the people that I've caught. And it did ring out to be about 74%. It's a little scary, but hey, can't be helped. All right, how to protect your students and ensure safety. This is one of the biggest and single most important elements to keep to, 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 to date. Now, keeping your students safe, the best way to do it is to have knowledge. Knowledge is the number one thing. Knowing what you're about to get into, knowing what your students are gonna get into, can, makes half the battle worth it. The other half involves, you know, these three tips. I know I put like six up here, but three tips. Get parents involved. If your parents are monitoring those children correctly, then I promise you, you're going to have an easy time making sure that they stay on task. Now, provide resources to students. Now, I often place little YouTube links or article links in the Google Classroom app so that my students can know exactly where to go. They don't have to wonder and be like, hey, where can we go to get information? And also, finally, you create scenarios. I have warned students about people who have gone into different websites where they weren't supposed to and they ended up going way deep into like the dark web. I just created little mini scenarios or I borrowed some and you know cited it of course about people who have gone too far into the web and what the consequences are. Or I've even kept it simple about what happens when you plagiarize on a job, plagiarize in college, anywhere. And some of them believe me, some of them don't. But you know how students are. You, they have to see it for themselves. So that's why I created scenarios. All right, so moving on. Protecting that computer. A lot of people don't know how to do this. But the best way to protect your computer is to first establish and purchase your antivirus software. As a tech savvy person myself, I make sure that I have the latest and best software on my computer. I use Avira. Avira is basically the little umbrella of a thing and it comes, with, it comes with a specialized VPN. Now, there are some other noted companies like Norton, McV, Avast, SVG. These guys are also pretty good with antivirus technology. Now, another method of being able to be conscious, another method of being able to protect your computer is to be conscious of the web links that you see when you Google a particular topic. Nine times out of 10, if it has a green check mark on the side of it, it's pretty reputable. Yellow, maybe a little caution, but if it has that red X on it, let it go. All right, so now most importantly, know what danger know what type of dangers exist out there so let's take a look trojans appearing as benevolent web pages but carrying hidden viruses very nasty ones they come they come from the idea of trojan horse worms these are information devourers now these are the main ones that most people know about but there are other more dangerous worms out there that could do far worse damage but this is the one that most people are generally going to need to know because you know we're in education information is everything phishing committed by hackers to get private and sensitive information to commit identity theft worst worst cases always happen within the school buildings or with advertisements that most people are drawn to we've had four phishing attacks in wilcox central over the past um, semester 
And finally, viruses, those bugs that systematically destroy your computer software from the inside. These are the little buggers you don't want. These are my, we're excited. We're excited from the internet. And they are all nice and nice and clean and organized. And so from here, one of the biggest things that I can tell you guys is that being able to protect your students and protect yourself is by far the most important detail. And then making sure that you have the proper conduct throughout the entire throughout the entire process. Make sure that you are leading by example when you do this. COVID-19 may not be going anywhere anytime soon. And considering the fact that a lot of us are on virtual learning, this is the best, this is the best time to reinforce those critical standards and rules about online conduct. The University of West Alabama is a great place to start. Be the change. Have a good day.